welcome back to the Regimentals YouTube channel. Today in the video we are going to be focusing on our selection of daggers that we currently have in stock. It's going to be very much for beginners, um, not too much detail and at the end of the video I shall give you some um, guiding for what reference books to look for. I just want to mention in my last video I did say that our next video was going to be about Alak porcelain. Um, but we've had a, an issue, a technical issue with lighting, which hasn't allowed us to film that video yet. So that will be coming next week. Uh, in the interim, we're doing this uh, video about um, daggers. So I'm just gonna start by um, showing you the selection of daggers as we go along and explain a few features about them um, to help guide you into what you're looking at. Okay, so starting with the SS daggers, we have two here. One is the the first type, which is known as the Model 33 dagger. Um, this one is an icon, I can tell that by the uh, the long neck on the eagle here. Um, but um, the early um, M33 daggers you see are usually made by uh, icon or EPNS, Boca, I think Robert Klass and a few others, but they don't come to mind at the moment. Always has um, this type of scabbard, which has become a collector term, anodized. They call it an anodized scabbard. Um, it's not actually anodized, but that's that's what it's become uh, commonly known as. On different makers, you'll notice things like the cross guard are different styles, different different widths, little features like the, the different eagles. That's how collectors can tell uh, which maker is which by um, just a glance. That is the Model 33. Now this one here is a, a full Rome inscription, which I have featured before on YouTube in one of my previous videos. Um, and that's for sale for £9,500. A, a typical Model 33 dagger in good condition, you'll find for sale around about four or £5,000, somewhere in that region. Moving on from there, this is the Model 36 dagger. Um, very, very similar looking. Um, the only difference being this uh, central uh, cross piece on the scabbard and then the chains are added and you can see we have the SS skull and the SS runes um, they usually have a marking here on the back a small uh, SS logo in a square there is usually or always no maker mark on uh, a model 36 dagger usually nothing on the blade apart from the SS inscription So this Model 36 dagger is on our website for £3,350. Um, condition's not great. You generally do see these upwards to five or £6,000 now for really, really nice condition ones. Moving on from there, we have uh, this type of dagger, which uh, at a glance looks identical to the SS dagger, apart from these are brown, whereas the SS daggers were black. You see examples here with the anodized scabbard, and you see examples with the painted scabbard. All different makers, there's hundreds and hundreds, well not hundreds, but there's lots of makers for um, SA daggers. Um, usually the maker mark is in the same place on the, the back of the blade. The inscription you see is in the same place, but different wording to the SS. Um, this example here is a partially erased Rome. So you can see on the blade there, there was a full Rome inscription, but the name Ernst Rome has been removed. Um, that makes it quite rare um, so because of it being once a Rome dagger it's on the website for £1,650. This next dagger, um, I can't remember the maker, uh, it was EPNS but as you pull the blade out you see the scratches on the blade. This is because this one was a uh, an Ernst Rome dagger and it's had the inscription fully removed so that's known as a fully removed Rome dagger. Um, it also has a very, very interesting leather scabbard, which is not something you see on most daggers. Uh, and that is on our website for £950. Okay, so the rest of our um, SA daggers, as you can see, they all range from about £500 to £650. And they will be all different makers. And they're priced also based on condition. This is an RZM. Um, this one here is another RZM. This one is um, Hako of Berlin. And then we have another RZM. As you can see, the RZM ones tend to look quite similar. They're all from the same maker, you see. Um, this one will be um, Solingen WKC. Again, it has different features. So they are all general S um, SA daggers. And they, as I said, they range from five to 700 pounds. Moving on from there, again, the same style. 
the, the grip looks identical to an NSA dagger, but the scabbard is black. So you think to yourself, um, for a novice, oh, is it SS or is it SA? No, it's neither. It's a branch known as the NSKK. So they're like motorized troops. Um, the, the maker system will be very similar to the SA. Oh, that's a stiff one. Uh, this one is um, Adolf Volker. Um, nice anodized scabbard, painted scabbard. Uh, that one is um, Makero. So the make it maker system and the pricing structure is very, very similar to the SA daggers. They'll all be about um, 500 pounds to 700 pounds. However, this one here, the Makero maker is quite a rare maker. So it's 950. And this one here, as you can see, particularly interesting because it has a leather scabbard and a very, very nice vertical hanger on it. And that's on the website for 995. So, you know, specific features can make them quite, quite a bit more expensive. Next, we have a Tino Manshewer, a very, very impressive, big dagger, um, quite heavy, painted scabbard, and the blade, as you can see, very, very impressive. Um, interesting Tino uh, maker mark there on the blade. It's made by Icorn with the squirrel here. That's the Icorn logo. And these retail for uh, 2,250 pounds. The officer's version of that, the Tino Dagger, uh, usually a lot taller, slimmer with an orange grip. Um, they are also very, very expensive. This is a very rare dagger. This is the government official's dagger. I don't have any hangers with it, but as you can see, really impressive and really nice quality and quite rare to have the knot with it as well. I'll show you the blade and we'll have a look at the maker. Again, it's Icorn. So as you can possibly tell from the video, Icorn is one of the most common makers that you see. Um, I wouldn't say it's not rare. I mean, everyone likes uh, Icorn. They're a very popular maker amongst collectors, but it is one of the more, the more common ones that you will see. These two here, identical daggers, they are known as the Red Cross Hewer. They're the man's hewer. They're not for officers, they're for man's. And these ones have the, um, the frogs with them. They're quite hard to find. And you will find these on our website for 600, 650 pounds. This is the officer's version. This is the Red Cross officers. Um, the, the hangers are missing. They fit onto there. This is on our website for 1,100 pounds. So next I have four Navy daggers, um, Kriegsmarine. Uh, typically they're, they all look very similar, but you do see these grips we're in uh, sometimes a very, very dark orange um, or the, the light coloured ivory looking dagger. Um, most navies, you know, 600 pounds, 500 pounds. This one here is uh, 2,200 pounds. And that is because it has a Damascus blade. And if you look very, very closely, you can see wavy lines on the blade. And that is because it is a Damascus blade. The maker here is G, B and S. Um, so that is on the website for, as I said, £2,200. And then moving up from there, we have this really nice dagger here, which is um, a, a navy dagger with the Dulux scabbard and um, Dulux fittings. You can see, you know, straight away compared to the other daggers, why this one would be priced somewhere in the region of, yes, it's about £7,000. It is really beautiful quality. And then when you open it up, blade, it's WKC, really, really nice. The knot is also super quality, much different to the regular knots you see. It's quite a special dagger. Here are the straps for it. Uh, moving on from there, a very, very typical um, RAD um, officer's hewer. Uh, with white fittings, sometimes you see these in the dark orange. There's not really, really much difference between the two, um, but the collectors have kind of uh, 
picked out that the orange grit ones are rarer. So I have noticed a big difference in price between the, the white grit ones to the orange grit. Orange grit ones are ex usually exceedingly more expensive. This one is 650. Uh, quite typical with these, very, very common for the plating to go. If you look closely at the scabbard, the plating always, always flakes like this. So if you find one that doesn't have these uh, poor quality um, plating, you've got a real find there. Also some cracks there to the the hilt that's an alcoso alcoso is a very popular maker amongst collectors um, so that's the officer's version this is the man's um, rad hewer this is a bit of a beast this one um, as you can see that would do some damage even though daggers were not really used and um, they are ceremonial but that's uh, wkc and uh, a man's hewer um, that would sell for 795. Moving on, um, these are army daggers. So we have a nice contrast here, the white grips and the orange grips. This is the, this is the orange grip that I'm talking about uh, when I refer, referred to the RAD and the Navy before, usually in this, this color orange. Um, sometimes I find amongst collectors that the darker the orange, the more popular it is. This is kind of midway. This is a very nice dark one. This is a nice dark one. Lovely dark uh, patina on this scabbard too. Um, no maker mark. You do see them with no maker marks. Um, usually more later in the war, they were no maker marks. Um, here's an Alcoso. You can see the Alcoso maker there. Lots and lots of different makers um, for army daggers. Army daggers generally without straps will be five to seven hundred pounds depending on condition. A very similar looking dagger is the um, second pattern Luftwaffe dagger. Looks very similar to the army. Um, obviously the eagle on it is the, the Luftwaffe eagle. Um, and here's a nice one with again the nice dark orange grips. Again Alcoso. Um, the orange grip seems to be a feature of Alcoso daggers. Luftwaffe daggers uh, without straps are about 550, 600 pounds. Um, this, this Alcoso one that I showed you though, um, look at the, uh, the blade on it. Really beautiful. And that's why that one is 1,850 pounds. So that was the second pattern Luftwaffe. And perhaps I should have shown you this first, but I wanted to show you how similar it was to the army. This is the first pattern Luftwaffe. So this one came out first, earlier on in the war. Um, dark blue leather scabbard, uh, a leather grip with wire entwined around the grip. Um, they come with these very, very basic metal chains. Now these often come in aluminium fittings or nickel fittings. You can see the difference here between the aluminium and the nickel. Um, this one is Krebs. Um, again, a maker I've seen a lot of over the years, but it is popular amongst collectors. This one here does not have a maker mark. This is quite a, a crude one, not, not too popular, but the aluminium fittings are not as popular as the nickel fittings amongst, amongst collectors. Um, they're both 650. Um, I guess the reason for the price difference would be condition, but as, as I said, nickel fittings tend to be more popular amongst collectors than the aluminium fittings. And then this little one here, this is the DLV Flyers knife. Um, really, um, I, I, this is one of my favorite daggers, quite attractive. This one is 1165 pounds. Something to look out for on these daggers, which um, a lot of people miss, is the, the, the marking here of a K on the um, end of the cross guard. It's very, very small. When you're buying um, daggers on all of these daggers, one thing to check out is make sure that the screws uh, on the fittings are original and not missing. That's something that a lot of new collectors miss. Um, here is a hunting dagger. A uh, lot of dagger collectors don't really go into the realm of hunting daggers, um, but some people do cross over and collect them as well as daggers. Some people just collect hunting cutlasses on their own. That's a nice icon example. And then of course, just to remind you, we do swords as well. And here is a nice um, SS sword. This SS sword is 4,150 um, pounds. You can see the maker mark there. And the SS logo. But swords um, are a whole different subject. A lot of people do collect daggers and swords, but some people just collect daggers. So, 
I wanted to just um, let you know what reference work to uh, to buy when you're when you're looking to find out more about daggers. There's uh, two um, dealers or collectors who have been in the industry for as long as I can remember, probably over 50 years. Um, Tom Whitman and Tom Johnson in America, they're the, they're the top guys for the reference books. They've both uh, done books and they've done books together. Um, and if you just go on the internet and type in um, Tom Whitman and uh, Tom Johnson uh, reference books, you can find some really, really knowledgeable books um, which date back, you know, for the last 30 or 40 years. So I would advise to buy those books if you're looking to find out more about daggers. Thanks for watching um, this video. Hopefully, if you're interested in, in any of these daggers, you can go onto our website, which is www.regimentals.co.uk, and you can see all of these daggers with their full descriptions and many photographs. All of them are for sale. Um, if you have any further questions, you can call us or email us and we'll help you further. So thanks for watching. Um, please remember to like the video please remember to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. We're really trying to push, we're close to 600 subscribers now, so we're really trying to get it up to 1,000 subscribers by, by the summertime. And if you want to leave a comment below, um, please feel free. It always helps uh, promote the channel. So thanks for watching and see you next time.